Good morning, Desert Hot Springs. Good morning. It's Tuesday, June 11th, 2019. I'm back in the saddle. Back in the saddle, baby. I had a long uh, week and a half of, of uh, work to catch up on. Lots of family stuff, good family stuff going on. We had a graduation in the family. Uh, it was really, really great. And uh, last week of school, I did a lot of running my daughter down to school. Um, so couldn't do shows last week for the most part. So um, back in the saddle, baby. Loving it. Loving it. Had a great weekend. Um, Father's Day weekend's coming up. For all you dads out there, love parents, love people having kids. It's a great thing. Um, pe good people being good parents, good parenting. Sorry, I got a little breakfast stuck in my tooth. Um, it's a good life. Boy, it's warm here in the desert. Woo wee! Uh, it's going to cool back down though, I hear. Into the weekend, it's going to get back down to normal temperatures, uh, average temperatures for this, this time of year. But right now, it's pretty warm. It's, uh, it's, it's, uh, the sustained heat's hard for some of the seniors and, and children, you know, here and there. So, um, stay cool if you can. If you can't, just hold on tight. Today, I think it's uh, this is gonna be the hottest 109, 110 or so. But, um, yeah, I missed, I missed coming on here. Missed you guys. Missed, uh, missed putting up uh, videos. And it was a little bit of a quieter uh, week that I was. I was busy catching up on some jobs for some customers and and um, doing stuff like that. Wrote a couple articles recently, but I got a lot more coming up coming up here. A lot more articles coming up here. So we got a, a not a long show here for you today. Just uh, going to go over what what I see happening in Desert Hot Springs and some some news and some things that I think affect Desert Hot Springs in uh, in some way. Because uh, I, I don't know of any other any other operation like this in Desert Hot Springs um, where um, I'm de I devote my time and energy to to uh, breaking down stories and, and articles and things like that that affect um, Desert Hot Springs in some way uh, or or are connected to Desert Hot Springs in some way connected to Desert Hot Springs in some way. Um, I like doing this in the morning. It's a good time of day to, to get out. And new, most news breaks in the morning. By the afternoon, it's kind of old old news. So, uh, a couple articles on on uh, newsanddhs.com mm -hmm. website. Go to the website newsanddhs.com and um, read through some articles. Share them too. Um, I, something. So so we're we're at https, which means secure newsanddhs.com. It's a secure website. HTTPS semicolon slash forward slash forward slash newsanddhs.com. But you can type in, just simply type in newsanddhs.com. Secure site. Uh, a couple articles that are on there. One of them is the uh, tonight is the, is the planning commission meeting. And one of the uh, things on the agenda for the planning commission is to discuss and possibly approve a cell tower at the AMPM at the corner of Palm and the 10 Freeway, that big Arco, which is Desert Hot Springs property, but Desert Hot Springs city um, land, I guess you'd say. I don't know how, you, how else you put it. It's privately owned in places, but it's within the city boundary, I guess you could say. So that, that raised my concern when I saw that on the agenda because there are, let's click on that, on that story. Uh, I know it's been up for a few days that story, so it's 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 possibly been read already by, but if you if you see this video, you possibly already read it. But they're talking about approving a cell tower that's going to be a monopalm, and there's a lot of concern about cell towers now being so close to uh, people at work. Um, there are numerous videos of of people who go near uh, cell towers and they see that there's a, a, a medical office right below it or right near it, and they they use their meters to read what um, what the readings are of the output from the cell tower while they're um, while they're standing near it. And and some people spend eight hours, ten hours a day inside some of these buildings, uh, you know, working. So their their prolonged exposure to it is uh, is 
is uh, is increased because of, of their close proximity to a cell tower uh, during work hours. So I. I'm concerned with these things going up, but more more importantly, what what came up is that these are cell towers going up near cannabis uh, facilities, n near retailers or near growers. Uh, there was one where they're talking about the cons uh, Community Culture Affairs Commission, which deals with, I guess, artwork in the city. They're talking about painting, you know, a design on that drum one that looks like a drum. It's on Little Morongo. At some fence company or whatever is, is the property that they put that on, but it's centered right in the center of all of the the growers. You know, it's it's right centrally located for all of them. So something something is going on with that, and you know, and you can see it. You can see that their proximity. And there's another one that they put in over by Mission Springs Water District uh, building. Um, I think it's First Street, First or Second Street, off of off of Palm, on the west, east side of of Palm. Uh, there's one in there. You can see it's a big. It looks like a big tower, uh, standing up. And they built that in the last couple of years. So they're quickly going up now. They're, they're they're rapidly putting them up. And they seem to be putting them up. Like if 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 that one is is considered near cannabis, you've got Desert's Finest, you know, in that area. So it, does it? The question is, does it have to do with all these growers? And if it does, then we're seeing a heavy. Um, a heavy devotion of energy and resources and time and material towards pacifying and making these these cannabis facilities um, uh, happy or or facilitating what their needs are in the city and people get me wrong I don't have any problem with cannabis there's nothing wrong with cannabis what I have a problem with and and I'm going to I'm going to try to start my my shows every day with the two main things that I am fighting Okay, there's two main things. One of them is the off-balance uh, exertion of energy towards certain groups. It's way, way lopsided. And if, if anybody, let's say you had two children and you were devoting a heavy amount of your energy and resources towards one and almost nothing to the other or very little to the other, that's off-balance. So what I see in Desert Hot Springs is I see this this cronyism, this 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 devotion of of so many resources and so much energy towards an industry that, quite frankly, what I see them doing is I see them. What they're doing is they're they're strip mining, they're strip mining the people of Desert Hot Springs and the city of Desert Hot Springs for all that they can milk out of it, while giving back very little. Now, if you go to if you go to my my Facebook page, RJ for DHS. It used to be uh, RJ for Mayor of DHS. RJ for Mayor. I forget what it was, but I changed it after the election because I want to keep it there and I want to keep promoting um, the the next election. But one of the things I posted on there was that after the election was, and oddly enough, the day I posted it was 420 days before 2020. It was just over a year from 2020. It was November of 20. Was it 2018? So, um, what what the mayor said was that we're going to have we're expecting to have 20 million dollars coming in from the cannabis industry, and I'm I'm digging in, I'm tracking into, I'm I'm delving into the the uh, city's paperwork on on what kinds of money, what kind of money is actually going into the city from the cannabis. And I know what what the mayor and politicians will do is they'll 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 skirt around the fact that we're not getting twenty million dollars from it, and they'll say, well, you know, you have to consider people who drive up to the city to pick up their cannabis. They might stop and get gas. That's not what he said. What he said was, you know, and that's not what was sold to the to the to the people of Desert Hot Springs to get to allow cannabis in here. And again, I'm not against cannabis. That's not what it's, this is about. This is about a lopsided favoring of a certain group of people who are profiting, hugely profiting, off, off, of, uh, off of Desert Hot Springs by having their, their businesses here. One of them, incandescent, uh, during the State of the, the, State of the City uh, event that happened over at the Health and Wellness Center that I went to, I stopped and talked to all the booths. I went one booth after another and talked to every one of them and had a little conversation with every single one of them. And one of them was incandescent, and one of the, the gentlemen that was, was there told me about, I asked him, I, I, I 
drilled into him for information into his brain. And uh, he told me that their biggest market for sales is Los Angeles. Okay, so they're growing it here and they're trucking it out, a lot, out of here towards Los Angeles. That's their number one market is Los Angeles. They're growing it here and they're bringing it out there. Not Desert Hot Springs, Los Angeles. Second, mark, second biggest market, San Francisco. After that, you get down to maybe San Diego, Long Beach. So what they're growing in Desert Hot Springs, they're, they're and uh, by the way, one of them, Harborside, which is going to be at the corner over there by that new cell tower, which is what this article was kind of about, because Harborside is, is going to be located, is, is almost, looks like it's almost finished being built, and they're probably close to the grand opening. Uh, they're a retailer, uh, dispensary, I guess you'd say, of cannabis, and they're going to be uh, getting a cell tower right at that intersection right there. When there's already one, you can see another one already right over off the road behind Jack in the Box. There's one that's got a big crane working on that one too. So what is the deal with these cell towers going in right near cannabis-related uh, facilities? And you get they always get their roads paved right in front of their, their businesses, right? Right when they're when they're done, I mean they they resurface the roads right in front of the dispensaries. Right when they go in, they resurface the roads right in front of um, new growers when they go in. So what is this? What is is this this cell tower location thing about? Why are why are there so many of them popping up right near cannabis places? Now I, I get it. If there's a lot of people working there, they, they they need their data transfer. They need their uplinks. They need their uploading. They need their downloading. Um, uh, what I'm sure there's a lot of things to. There's probably a thousand reasons why cell towers exist near places like that. Where I mean, do they um, wirelessly? Or everything is going wireless at some point. I mean, they're gonna, you're gonna have um, in the future. You're gonna have cars that are that are all wi wireless. I mean, it's all gonna be you know uh, Bluetooth connected everything. So the the hard cables are gonna be going away. So the speed at which they can they can do their transactions, their sales, it's all through those cell towers is going to be very rapid. They're not going to have the ground lines, the fiber optic going through in the future. So they're setting up for the future for these sales. And it's also located pretty close to what uh, Mike Tyson's going to be putting in here, which is another story. Because in that Mike Tyson, there's a new, there's a story on Drudge Report about, I mean, it, it made Drudge Report. So we'll see if we can see if it's still up there. The Mike Tyson and De Desert Hot Springs. So Drudge Report is down at the bottom. Mike Tyson, where is he here? Here, right here. Mike Tyson plans marijuana resort. So this is a an international um, conglomerate of news stories that that um, Matt Drudge finds interesting, and he posts them on his site. So Drudge gets Drudge is the mo busiest uh, news website there is. So, hot boxing inside Mike Tyson's pot empire from premium cannabis to plan for a 420-acre marijuana holiday resort in the California desert with a Weed University Music Festival venue. Now, he, it's just been announced that Mike Tyson is is going to put it on the on both sides of the freeway. So. What I see this being is this is a this is a huge huge public relations project for cannabis. Now this is this is going to be like a gateway as you're coming from Arizona uh, towards Los Angeles because this Los Angeles is what this is about. This is not about Desert Hot Springs. This is about Los Angeles, the people going into Los Angeles, the people who live in Los Angeles who come out to the desert. This is a big gateway. Gateway, you know, people say gateway drug, whatever. It's a gateway into Los Angeles, and he's basically going to have both sides of the freeway, and you're not going to be able to miss what he's got there. So this is a this is a big thrust in your face, cannabis, Mike Tyson. I mean, we know the guy's got you know big cojones. We know that we, you know he, he's not afraid of it pretty much anything. So Mike Tyson is is now going to be on the Palm Springs side and the Desert Hot Springs side. That wasn't what was originally proposed to us. Now what I what I like to spot is it's not so much deception, it's withholding information or it's, it's releasing it at the right time. Okay, now, now Mike Tyson didn't, didn't just recently, I don't believe, he just recently decided, why don't I go on the both sides of the freeway? I mean, he might have, but it doesn't seem, doesn't seem plausible. And another thing about this story, 
so so my point is that why would they why would they withhold that it's going to be on both sides of the freeway except if they were trying to pacify the people of desert hot springs by saying you desert hot springs you are special you are the ones who are getting all this and then once once that was out there and everybody was well not everybody most people were happy with oh okay yeah we're gonna get mike tyson they say yeah but now he's gonna be in palm springs too on the other side of the 10 freeway and they're like what it's not just us? No, I don't think it ever was just us. I think that they had plans to do it on both sides of the freeway from the, almost from the get-go. But they, they shape, they don't do any deep digging, and they don't even present the possibility that, that it could have been the plan all along. Because then you can have, it's, you can't miss, it's both sides, and you can even you know, exit and go to one side, and you can exit and go to the other side. I don't know how you, how you get to the one that's going to be on the Palm Springs side. I mean, if it's going to be what, that, there's a train track that runs th through there, so I don't know how you get to that one. I don't know what, what the, the the plans are for that one, but here's here's that article. There's got they've got a lot of images. Some of them you've already seen. Some of them have been on you know for a long time. It looks like he's going to have some roads in his complex named um, Mahalo Mil, 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 Milhayo. I don't know what that is, but he's got pictures here of and and the the the, 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 the most insulting thing about this article to me is the wording in this it's all like Mike Tyson wants to help you he wants to help you feel better this is a business this is a for-profit strip mining business it's gonna it's going to absorb Desert Hot Springs time resources energy and the profits are gonna be kept very little is gonna go to Desert Hot Springs compared to what they're gonna make they're gonna make millions upon millions upon millions and upon millions of dollars and hundreds of thousands, possibly, are going to come into Desert Hot Springs. So, I mean, that's capitalism. I love capitalism. I'm totally for it. The point is, again, that it's lopsided information. They tell you very little about the, of the truth. And in the end, what they sold to you, you don't get. Because you see it. It's going on month after month after month in Desert Hot Springs. You know, you still see the same problems. And they're like, cannabis is going to save the city. No, cannabis was, was brought into the city as a huge profit business uh, on, the, on the back of, of, uh, of some crisis that, you know, who knows? And we have the same people, same people running the city that brought it down to 400 bucks in the bank. The same people are running it. So you have to wonder if the, the, the people who brought the city down to 400 bucks, if that even happened. I mean, they, we can't really check everything. And, you know, they... Don't get me started. So the point is that this was this was a business that was brought into Desert Hot Springs to make money off of. Plain and simple. And everybody's getting money out of this that's connected to this. Not the not the people who just live in the city, who drive through the city. It's the people who are signing the approvals, you know, the people who are, are doing the deals with the city, with the businesses, with the dispensaries, with the, uh, the cultivators, they're all making huge amounts of money. You know, they, they say that they're, you know, this and that there's competition. But as I put in one of my, my past articles, there's a link now to getting people off opiates. And I asked about that. When I went to the uh, state of the city, I talked to uh, every booth and one of the, one of the dispensaries was there. And the person who ran the dispensary told me that once they get, this, 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 these were the words, once they get, once they start getting people off opiates with it, it's going to really take off. I mean, they have no fear about their, their business, about their product. No fear. You can see it in their faces. They're, they're just like, da, 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 It's like it's a baked in the cake guarantee that they're going to thrive. And that's crony. You know that that's that's partnering. That's corporations partnering with with government to create an unfair advantage. You know you can't. And then they blame capitalism. I was just commenting on somebody's Facebook post this morning. They blame capitalism for what's going on in the country, but it's not. It's crony capitalism. So you have a higher con higher concentration of wealth in the smaller hand smaller number of hands of people, and they blame capitalism for that. So they want, it's, it's, it, 
it's backroom deals, it's insider uh, um, meetings, it's it's so much garbage that that creates a tilted, slanted playing field where one side gets to run downhill and the other side's always got to run uphill. You know, they're always playing uh, unfairly. Side note. If anybody wants to call in, 760-671-5627, 760-6715-MAS, because that's what I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you a MAS, more. So, line's right here. You're welcome to call in. Got a little light on here, so anybody calls in, I'll pick up, I'll put you on, and you can ask your question. Just say who you are, what part of Desert Hot Springs you're from, or if you're from another city, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you're from. You can call in. And eventually, this will get this will get uh, working. I mean, it, it, there will be people calling in because so, I, I don't I don't quit. I, I stick with what I do. Once I decide what I'm going to do, I go with it and I build it. Because that's what I'm. I'm a, <clears throat> I build things and I build them and then they succeed. So sometimes I fail. I, I used to fail a lot more when I was younger, but I don't, I don't fail as much anymore. So the the cannabis thing is going on. Um, they're making more money. They're making more money. They're making more money. They're making more money. And we still see more and more homeless just roaming the streets, breaking into people's houses. We still see trouble keeping full staff. Where's the motorcycle cop, by the way? Where'd that guy go? I never see that guy anymore. Do you see him anymore? I never see the motorcycle cop. What happened? Again, what were we sold with that? I don't see him Hardly ever. And I drive. I, 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 I intentionally drive through town every day, in and out. And I, I mean, I could take Indian Canyon sometimes. I could take a Little Morongo, but I decide I'm going to go right through town. I drive right, right down Palm, and I look for the motorcycle cop. I don't see him. I mean, I, I might miss the random times that he's out there, but I mean, it's been it's been a long time since I've seen that motorcycle cop. Where'd the bike go? Where'd that guy go? Do they see that, you know, they, the cops, they kind of come in, they get a little injured, they go all away, they kind of just kind of fade off for a little while, and they, you know, and then we, they say we're fully staffed and blah, blah, blah. It's just, it's such a, an odd game of, of non-transparency. Another thing going on in the city, we, we wonder about that park. I wasn't able to make it on Saturday to that uh, Miracle Springs meeting about the park that was going to be. Um, it's being designed right here. Share your voice. Final community workshop for a park, new park in DHS. Uh, it's gonna, they're gonna build it in, uh, I guess, 12th Street, 12th Street and Palm, which I don't see. Re I don't see and understand why, because there's always the vet already the Veterans Park up there, and if you drive by the Veterans Park, it's rarely more than one person in the park. There's lots of benches. So. Um, some of the stuff that, that I have looked into has led me to, to understand that there is, a, there is a strong effort nationwide, and in Desert Hot Springs included, there's a strong effort nationwide to, how do I say this, to spend as much money as possible. And <clears throat> as we deepen into some of the uh, uh, underworkings, some of the, again, what, what I call it is that, that deeper spectrum and the upper spectrum, the lower and the upper spectrum beyond what they tell you about. As we delve deeper into information about that, we're going to be, we're going to be discussing the, the attempts to basically bankrupt as much of the country as possible. And you can see it. You see the, the Mayor Mattis, he'll go out to, uh, to Washington and just say, please give us money. I mean, it's, he's not saying that, those words exactly, but that's what he's doing. He's looking for funding, looking for money, looking for money, looking for money, looking for money, always asking for money, need money. Where's that money come from? It's printed. It's printed. How, how's it made? It's just printed out of thin air, thin air. So what I did was I gave myself a link here and... What I'm going to do is I'm going to hopefully bring some awareness to how some things in our country actually operate. And some of them operate very poorly, but that's usually by design. So, you know, when our, 
when our talking heads in our city, because we have them, we have talking heads in our city, and that's going to be probably a, a, a topic for later this week. We're going to discuss the, um, the, the, the talking heads that are all over social media. And social media is very powerful. I hate it, but it's very powerful. So it is a place to, to study what's going on because social media is where people go for their news, go for their information, go for their opinions that, they, that they're told to have. So we have talking heads in Desert Hot Springs who live in Desert Hot Springs. Some of them don't, but most of them do. It seems like that's what the profiles say they do. And they, they talk for the system and the status quo of, a, of our city and our cannabis industry and all this. They talk for it. They, they, they're self-proclaimed um, representatives of these crony movements, these strip mining movements that happen uh, in just about every city there is. I mean, Desert Hot Springs is no different. Um, it's it's the same just about everywhere. There's some sort of industry there that's promising, you know, the pie in the sky to the residents in the beginning to approve them in, to come in. And then when they come in, um, people forget. They forget what? What? Oh, we must be, they're doing well. We must be getting money from that. And it's just, they, they just never really see it. It's just, uh, we're struggling or we, you know. So you, you have these talking heads in our city. And they talk about, you know, the mayor going for money in, in Washington, going to get some money for the, for the cannabis industry, for the hotels, for this and that. You know, so you, you basically have people who are okay with welfare. I mean, that, that's what our mayor is about. He's about welfare. He's, he's, he says, give me free money. Give me money that I didn't earn. Give it to me. I will gladly take it for free. And you grant it to me. They, and that's what I find that revolves around that circle is they're all connected to nonprofits. They all basically are into welfare. Okay, they're all about hat in hand, give me money for doing nothing. And that is a spirit that those people have. They have a spirit of give me money for doing nothing. And that's part of the second main reason why I do this. Okay. You have public sector people and you have private sector people. You have two different groups of people in this world. You can break them down, you know, male and female, um, public, private. Private sector people, which is what I am, okay, we cannot afford to fail at the work we do. It would drive us out of business. Public sector people, they can afford to fail because they're not going any, anywhere. That's uh, tenure. That, that is teachers who have tenure, who, who are terrible teachers by the end, but they can't be fired. That's people who uh, work for government. They can't be fired at times. They're, you have to accept the, the terrible uh, service that they give you. And they also like getting money for not working real hard at times. I'm not saying everybody, and I'm not saying that people in the public sector don't want to work. I'm not saying that. But it's a, it's a, it's a flavor among those people. They're okay with taking free money. I personally am not. I'm not. I'm not for that. I don't like that. Okay. I don't like that feeling. I don't. I don't like taking something that I didn't earn. I don't like it. It's not my thing. But there are people that surround the mayor, including the mayor, who go out and say, "Please give us free money that we don't have to pay back that we didn't earn." And that's what. The, the, circ the, the circle of people around the, the mayor, and we're talking about the Donnas, the, the, the Borks, the, I mean, all these people, they're all tied to government. They all, they all are for getting free money. They have nonprofits where they, they get donations, and the donation money goes into paying their salary, okay? Because the, the founder of a nonprofit gets a salary, can get a salary. If there's money, they get a salary. And you find the, the Michael Picardis, they all have nonprofits, the, the Kevin uh, Shepard, I don't know how to say his name, um, the guy who, the, the pastor over at the church on uh, Pearson, they all have non -profit. He's got a couple of them. He's got several, okay, nonprofits where the, the board votes how much to pay the founder. So that's how the, and the non nonprofits can get around um, uh, looking like they're, they're corrupt is... The board members decide how much to pay the salary of the 
founder of the nonprofit. And who are the board members? They're all nonprofit people. <laughs> so you have the same people who run their own nonprofits go and be board members. I mean, or you have government people like Gary Gardner's a board member of Kevin Shepard's nonprofit. I mean, it's just this incestuous group that are for free money, for not working for some of the money they make, and voting to get their buddies to be paid off their nonprofits. So, this, this part of the second reason why I do this, okay, is because public sector people are tired of, or private sector people like myself are tired of public sector people stripping everything out. And, and it's so lopsided. They're the majority in these groups. They won't let anybody from the private sector who has different different morals and ideals than them get in or get around them. They block you out because they're that that is the heavy imbalance. And that's why you're seeing so many private sector people getting involved now because we're, we're basically shut out from the public sector because we don't think like them. What they want is they want money for nothing. Chicks for free? Isn't that a song? They want the money for nothing and they don't want somebody who wants to come in and work for the money or, or say that the money needs to be, you know, really uh, watched and, and, and spent, you know, very softly. Why? Because they want to bankrupt the country. That's my theory, okay? And it's, if you research it, it's, it's really, really evident that they spend as much as they possibly can. They keep this, the, they never really fix the problems. They... And they'll, they'll use hundreds of trillions of dollars in fake money to do it. And that's what I'm going to get into. That's why I was talking about how over this journey, we're going, to, we're, going to, we're going to dig deeper into where money comes from. So this circle says, oh, the mayor's going to go get some money from Washington. Oh, it's so great. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor. You're representing us. Thank you so much. You're going to get money for, for our city. But what is money? What is, what is that dollar bill? What, what, where does it come from? Okay? And... What I have pulled up here is the biggest scam in history of mankind, the fractional reserve banking system. Most simplest way to put it is if you deposit $100 into the bank, they then can loan out 90 to 100 of those dollars to somebody else. They used to have a, it used to be 10%. They used to have to keep 10% of your money. It's actually kind of been switched to zero. So it's somewhere floating in there. It hasn't fully shown itself yet. But what was kept over as the 10% is what they will give you back if you go and withdraw all your money. Okay, so if, if 10 people deposit $100, okay, that's $1,000 deposited, okay? You know they have much more than that in the bank. But if it, let's say they deposit, there's $1,000 deposited, they have to keep 100 of it. Hundred dollars, hundred dollars, ten people, hundred dollars. They only expect maybe one of them to come back and get the money out out of those thousand. That's that's how it is. If everybody went back to get their money out of the bank, they wouldn't have it. They don't have enough. They don't have all your money. Why? Because we have a fractional reserve banking system, which means that when you deposit a hundred dollars, they can loan ninety of that back out. Okay, they loan it out. So now they've taken your money, and they've loaned out. $90 of your money to somebody else. Now that person comes around and deposits that $90 in the bank because they loan it to, they take your $100, 90 of it, they loan to Bill. Bill goes out and buys a bicycle from Jim. Jim takes that $90, Jim comes back to the bank and deposits the $90. Bill's got his bike, doesn't have a $90 anymore. He's got to pay it off now. So he's paying the bank back for the $90 he was loaned. Jim comes, deposits the $90. They can loan 90% of that back out. So just $100 can be turned into $1,000 in, or, or more in loans. So they take your money, they loan it out, and they receive the interest on it. It's the biggest scam in the history of mankind. Okay, The reason it doesn't fall apart is because everybody doesn't go back for their money at the same time. 
if they all did, you you wouldn't you wouldn't get your money. I promise you. We call the we call the bank run. There was a movie on that. I think it's it's a wonderful life. So. I encourage you all to go to this. It's called Gold Stock Bull Investment Strategies. And watch this video. The Federal Reserve, biggest scam in the history of mankind. Why did I bring this up? Because it's tied to the people and the mayor who go to events and they go to cities and they do things and nobody asks deeper questions. Like, where does this money come from? Who's, gonna, who's paying for this free money they get? And they're always talking about free money, free money, grant money, grant money, free money, grant money, grant money, free money, free money, free money, grant money. Federal, federal government's going to give us money. State's going to give us money. County's going to give us money. So what I'm fighting for is to put back into the public sector some of the ideals and morals that private sector people have. Because if you have people who are running your city who are all for welfare. You're not going to have a voice of people who want to work hard. And what they're going to do is they're going to impart their values and their morals, I call them lack of, because they're interested in getting money for nothing. They're going to impart because they have the biggest voice. They're going to impart those values or lack of on the youth. And the youth are going to be trained to just go out and ask for free money. because just recently was announced, I just read it last night, it was probably out for a couple days, that over summer now, they're going to give people free food. The school system or whatever it is, the... my kids go to a camp and they already do it. They give free food to, a, to, a, to homeless in the area. I mean, my kids don't need the free food, but it's, it's, it's that spirit of getting something you didn't work for is not what I want 100% of the voice to say to my neighbors in the city I live in, okay? It runs out. You can't take care of everybody, feed everybody, take care of everybody, pay for everything for everybody. You can't do it. So if you switch your thinking and you just for a moment, imagine if you were trying to bankrupt the country. Desert Hot Springs part of that country included. So we get the fallout of if that plan is real, okay? Just put yourself in the mindset that you are trying to run the country into a ditch, out of money. Just imagine if you were trying to do that. How would you do that? You'd give away free money to whoever would take it. Free money anytime you can. Just keep rising the debt so that you create a crisis so that then, like I said in a past, a past episode, a digital currency can come in. A digital currency that is not paper, it's all electronic, where, it's like I said, there's a trillion dollars. That's all they have to do. They don't have to back it. And this site is about gold because it's showing you that actually holding something in your hand of value is actually having the value. Not putting it in a bank so that they can take it apart and leave you just the little button and take and, and loan your pen out for you. Because you go back for your pen, all you your pen's gone. All you have is the button for it. So if you actually hold the gold, which I'm for, if you actually hold the actual precious metal in your hand, you have the value of that. So we have to, we have to be a voice for, which is the majority of people. The majority of people out there ha actually go to work each day and they earn what they make. And if they don't do a good job at it, they actually, they actually will, will run out of, business, out of business. They'll be put out of business. These people in the city, they can't be put out of business. They're expecting to be there for eternity. And what they, what they stand for is not what I stand for when it comes to hard work and getting what you earned. If you earn something, you keep it. They just ask for it. They, they, they are the, the welfare recipients. They're for welfare. They're for receiving something for nothing. So if they're for receiving something for nothing, they're going to shed those principles on the people. And you're going to see it get worse and worse and worse because everybody's going to be trained to be, not everybody, not me, you're going to, but, but you're going to get, they're going to get the loudest voice to, to, to be for getting something for free until it's not there anymore, which we all know it's impossible. It's impossible to support everybody forever.
You can't do it. You can print some funny money and some fake money as, you know, for as long as you want, but eventually it runs out. So I want a voice for being, being smart with money in our, in our government system. Smart with money, smart with spending. <clears throat> That's why they block me out. Because they know I'm not like them. And what they're, what they're for is they're for security off of free money. Now, if, if, if their staff in the city and they're taking free money and they're spending it in the city, they are for welfare. There's no two ways about it. If they are politicians in our city and they take money, free money, and they spend it in the city, they are for welfare. Versions of it, smaller versions of it, larger versions of it, it's a, still a version of it. <clears throat> because the city can't do what it wants to do on its own. We, in the private sector, have to do what we want to do on our own. And we feel good about that. And we know that that creates good values, morals, principles, uh, um, uh, frugal behavior. It causes you to live within your means. If you give people free money, eventually they will abuse it. Not everybody, but it, it's, it's rife with abuse. They don't know where it comes from. They just know that the check arrives each day, and they didn't do anything. I mean, there's countless stories of people who just keep having kids just so that they can get another, a bigger check every month. They don't take care of those kids very well. Not all of them, but some of them, there's horror stories about people who, who milk the system, who strip mine the welfare system. So anyway, that's uh, covering that. So look into where the money comes from. That's a little homework for you, if you, if you will, please. So, what do we have here? So you got back to the cannabis thing a little bit. This is a story that came up. Harborside joins the ranks of U.S. cannabis companies going public in Canada. That's so that they can get investors to dump money into the company. They're going to, Canada allows cannabis companies to uh, be publicly traded. The U.S. does not yet. I, I am, I'm guessing that with all this PR push, because if, if they're covering... The Mike Tyson thing is in Daily Mail. Daily Mail, that's in the UK. Okay, that's a, that's a, that's a news site, dailymail.com. That's going more mainstream. And the fact that Drudge Report covered it means that there's a PR move on the roll now. And when I say PR roll, move on the roll, <clears throat> that means that they want you to know about this. They, they want to put this out there. So they're promoting it. And you can, you can see from their moves, this is not by happenstance that, that this, is, this, this story is, is being pushed out there. <clears throat> There's another one on Drudge Report, and I'll get back to Harborside in a minute. But it's about making money, and they're, <clears throat> they're using Desert Hot Springs to make money. Make money, baby. <clears throat> they, don't, they don't care as much about the city as they, they pretend to, uh, to make you you know, think they do. LA legal pot industry fed up with rogue shops. So that, that alarm, that's an AP story. So that al uh, alerts me to the, to the possibility that they're going to start cracking down. Um, industry wants LA cracked down on rogue shops because the dispensaries who are running and doing things by the book, cash business by the book, kind of an oxymoron right there. You know, you know they're not claiming all their money. You know they're not. You just know they're not. They're a cash business. I, I mean, they they have accounting businesses, and that's what I, I asked that question to the uh, the gentleman from Incandescent, and <clears throat> you know he he gave me a good answer about how they're they're a cash business, how, but they're audited, but they have to be by the books. Here's here's the point. When the state, which the state of California has decided, and these are the legislators in California, have decided that they are going to thumb their nose to the federal government when it comes to cannabis. They are going to allow it to be sold. They're going to protect growers. They're going to protect, they're going to shield growers. They're going to shield dispensaries from federal um, attacks. Now, is this a long game that's being played by the federal government because they need some time to get people used to it? 
Maybe the federal government at some point already plans to legalize it, but they have they can't look like it's overnight switch. So they have to let some states prove that it's not as bad as what people thought it was. Okay, maybe they have to do that. So you're seeing that it's the legal dispensaries now uh, being used to get the public on board with cracking down on rogue shops. Okay. So this is this is this is an end around where they're they're looking to to get an outcome by other means by by using a, a long route around to get to it okay because if they went straight to it the rogue shops would just pick up and run so what they need to do is they need to get people that's not true if if they went right after the the rogue shops then you'd have people crying. This is this is cruel. You can't shut these people down. These people are just making a living. But if you run the story that the legal ones are suffering because of the rogue ones, then you get the empathy side. You get the people who are for the industry to awaken to support the legal ones. And then you, you build up an army against the rogue ones. So this this is the kind of movement that happens in desert hot springs it happens in palm springs it happens in seattle it happens all over the place these secondary third action moves and you have to get keen to these things and i'm going to be i'm going to be trying to break down as as we go through these years of this this program i'm going to i'm going to break down what i think is happening in those ways because they do not that, that's that visible line they want to keep you in. The Russell Betts, the Anneli Zavala, the Jan Pye, the Gary Gardner, the Mayor Mattis, they want to keep you in this only this little narrow window so that you can't see anything below it or above it. They, that's where they have to keep your attention. They can't let you get outside that because they can control this. They can control this line of sight, but they can't control you once you see everything above and below. Then you're out of their control. So you have to get keen to these moves. And, and when the news jumps on something, they're, they're trying to make a move. And it's usually something that's going to gain for the system. It's going to gain for government. It's going to gain for the, um, the, the permit department. It's going to gain for the, the police. The police can grow another SWAT team. So I've told you the media is, is there working with the government to get <clears throat> to get the government bigger, and they're the lapdog. That's what they call the lapdog. They keep the government's lap warm. They call it the lapdog media. So Harborside's looking to, to um, increase their their money base by getting investors to, to dump money into the company. They're gonna they're gonna they're gonna own part of the company once it goes public uh, in Canada. The investors are gonna have a share of the company. Uh, but it's a great way for a company to to get a flooded with cash. So it looks like Harborside, which is going to be in Desert Hot Springs, is going to is going to use Desert Hot Springs as a location to grow their to be able to tell the shareholders in in Canada that are coming um, that they're um, stronger off of Desert Hot Springs, for example. So we covered the pot industry Let's see, well, there was one other thing that I wanted to cover here. Uh, that, not that one, okay, over here. Did I send another one? There was a... Let me see if I can pull it up. A third, one third of cannabis users schizophrenia. I can pull it up here. I had it in a link earlier, but I, I think I closed it. So, me cannabis and schizophrenia, new evidence unveiled. This is from 2017. The nature of the relationship between cannabis and psychiatric disorders has been hotly debated for decades. A new study using genetically modified mice adds more fuel to an already blistering blaze. Pun, I guess you'd say. Cannabis is by far the most commonly used illicit drug both across the United States and globally. According to the 2015
2015 National Survey of Drug Use and Health, 22.2 million people had used the drug in the previous month. Furthermore, according to the monitoring of future study of 2016, almost half of the 12th graders have tried marijuana at least once in their life. Because of its prevalence in the new legislation affecting legality in the U.S., research into its pros and cons is at an all-time high. Over the years, the question of whether cannabis is linked to, linked to psychiatric conditions has been investigated many times. Research has produced mixed results. The psychosis cannabis question. To date, the consensus is that cannabis use increases the risk of psychosis, but across the population, the effect is relatively small. The latest researchers to throw their hat in the ring of fire hail, that, hail from Tel Aviv University in Israel. Their results are published this week in the journal Human Molecular Genetics. A mouse model was used in this particular study, more specifically the strain of mice with a mutant DISC-1 gene. These mice have genetic susceptibility to developing schizophrenia and were split into four experimental groups. The exposure to THC came at the point in their life equivalent to human adolescence. Okay. Neurological, biochemical analysis and behavioral tests carried out on the animals showed that only the genetically susceptible mice developed schizophrenia-related changes after being exposed to cannabis. So, what we see is we see billboards. When you come back from L.A., you see the billboards for the cannabis. You see, you're seeing it. I mean, it's it's really getting um, um, ubiquitous, especially in our area. Uh, you, you see cannabis signs on um, industrial parks saying cannabis friendly or cannabis uh, um, ready. So cannabis is 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 really. It's being fed to younger people. Uh, the, the idea of cannabis is being fed to, to younger people. And the risk is that um, adolescents who consume cannabis have a, have a, a strong, strong uh, risk. No, I would say strong. There's a risk there of those, those adolescents later on in life developing schizophrenia. So a psychosis, psych psychological disorders that would not have been present um, if they hadn't tried cannabis when they were younger. So that's that, that's that spectrum that they, again, they try to keep you in, which is that it's safe, it's been around for a long time, it, you can grow rope with it, you can um, cure cancer with it, but they don't talk about the above and below. And I, I look for those things because look at vaping. Look at what vaping did. Vaping was in like strawberry flavors and beautiful bright colors. You know they were that was pushed on kids. I mean, what in that industry wants as many consumers as possible using it. And they don't care. Well, look at the tobacco industry. They knew it caused cancer and they didn't care. They gave it they, they promoted it to, to women. Doctors even smoked. So you had vaping, you had the vaping industry. They're still doing it today. You get a bunch of kids that vape when they're in high school now, you know. So, so it's being pushed on younger people. So you have the same thing with cannabis, you know. It's being pushed on young people. They'll say they it, it's illegal to, to do it until you're 21, but they know kids are doing it. And what? And if kids do it, you know, they're at risk of psychosis later on, developing schizophrenia. So it's not a perfect plant. It's not. And especially once they start, the state starts tinkering with it, they start spraying stuff on it and start growing it genetically modified, everything gets ruined at some point. Everything. So I would beware if I were you. And, and again, I'm not against cannabis. I'm not against it. What I'm against is the lopsided information, the information that is only selectively given to you. I'm for free and open, full, transparent information. Okay? And, pardon me, if the people supporting this industry in the city omit certain bits of the information and only promote the positive side, that's lopsided. That's a, a slanted, tilted field against people. Okay? So, I'm here to try to get people to think about how lopsided and unbalanced everything is when it comes to um, 
Desert Hot Springs because we could be doing a lot better than we're doing. We could be doing a, a gigantic amount better. And that's what I ran for on my platform was that I said, I said, it wouldn't take very long. It wouldn't take very long at all. But they fear me. They fear what I will do because I will get people to be proud of the city. And it won't, it won't take very long because I, the power of the people is, is incredible. But as long as you allow them to keep you in that narrow band by using their Borks and their, their, uh, their Picardies and their Donnas that shut down information being shared, as long as you let them keep you in that narrow band which gets smaller and smaller every year, oh, it's beautiful. If you do this, you realize the ceiling is, is, is flooded and it's about rotting and about to fall in. And if you do this, you see that you've got sewage on the floor if you do this, you say, oh, it's great. Everything is just beautiful out there. So if you allow them to keep you in that narrow band, they will continue to strip mine the great city of Desert Hot Springs. They will continue to suck as much out of it with false promises as they can. They will drive around their Mercedes Benzes. They will create gigantic wealth for themselves. They will drive around their big, huge, road-pounding Hummers while they tell you that they want you to take the train. And they will, they will suck everything that they can out of the city, year after year after year with false promises. So, the show got a little serious uh, for a little while, that's good. Every once in a while we need to do that. Um, yeah, I talked about the bankruptcy, I made a couple notes, what I wanted to talk about. Talk about where money comes from, talk about that. Um, Last thing, uh, last point I wrote down was about the money that said, what does a person do who is going to claim bankruptcy? So it was part of my, um, my ability to, my, my, what I thought was, was a good way of explaining if you wanted to bankrupt, if you knew, if you knew the system was going to go bankrupt, if you knew that there was no way to pay off the debt, the, pay off the deficit in the country, which is 22 trillion, I think, at this point. If you knew there was no way to pay it back, because every every single person in America now owes something like fifty-six thousand dollars to the government, this the the national debt. So if you knew it was going to implode at some point, what would people do? They would max out their credit cards. Okay, if they were going to claim bankruptcy in the coming months, they would take the credit card they have that that. They only, they only have a, they have a two thousand dollar limit on it, and they've only got thousand dollars on it. All the other ones are maxed out. They take that last one, and they would spend the last thousand dollars. Not everybody, but I know people would do that. I know people would take that last thousand dollars, go buy a bunch of TVs with it, or go furnish their house with it, because they know that they're going to add that credit card to their bankruptcy, and they're going to just shove it off and put it into the, into the court, and say, dismiss it. Please. So if the goal was to bankrupt, they would max out the credit card. They would max, they'd go and they would say, give us as much money as you can give us. Give us as much, we'll burn through it as fast as we can. We'll build ourselves a new city hall. We'll build ourselves new signs that say Desert Hot Springs. We'll build ourselves palm trees. We'll build ourselves bright colored lights on those palm trees. We'll build ourselves medians. We'll stripe our roads for things that are never going to be used. We'll burn through the money as fast as we can, doing as much useless stuff with the money as we possibly can. Because we're going to lump all that money into the bankruptcy. So, the people running Desert Hot Springs are burning through as much cash as they possibly can, get their hands on, as fast as they possibly can, on things that don't matter. Okay, material goods is what somebody would, who's, who's reckless and had to go through bankruptcy would, would some of them, would, what they would do is they would, they would buy um, sneakers, things like that, and then they just add it to the, to the bankruptcy. So that was one of my points here. So we covered that. Um, it's probably a good point to end the show. It went for a, about an hour. There's a lot more. Um, to do the site's getting better. I'm going to start removing the um, the events that already happened. It, it 
you know, juggling life and and uh, and running a website and and uh, to going to meetings tonight. I plan to go to the planning commission meeting if I can make it back from work. I work today. So with everything going on, it's getting better, getting better at it. Like these May twenty sixth twenty sixth events, I'll I'll uh, I'll take those off of uh, coming events up here because this, this top part of the website is supposed to be for events that are coming. So the I'm learning it. I'm getting better. The past events I'll take off. Only uh, future ones will stay up there. But if you have events, email me at stevergibony at gmail dot com. It's stevergibony at gmail dot com. If you have some events that you know of that are coming up, uh, book readings, um, you know, Cabot Yerksa, um fundraisers, things like that. Um, anything that you know that's coming up, email it to me. I'll put it. I'll check it out. Make sure it's it's going to happen, and put it on the site as a coming event. Uh, I'm having a lot of fun. This is this is great. I love living in Desert Hot Springs. We, you know, July is the hottest month. Oh, I'm going to be writing an article pretty soon about burglaries. So beware. Summertime, in the middle of the day, seven o'clock to four p.m. Seven a.m. to four p.m. Peak burglary hours. Because people are hot. They got their windows open. They got their doors o open a little bit. That's when people are breaking in. Summertime is the peak, peak, peak time to do it when they burglarize and middle of the day because they know you're at work. Windows open so you can come home to a house that's not as hot and you're at work. Summertime and while you're at work. Seven to four, summertime, peak burglary season. So beware. I'm going to write an article about that pretty soon. So until then, Desert Hot Springs, go to newsanddhs.com and... Check out some articles. There's going to be more on there. And until then, I'll see you soon. I'll see you in town if I see you. Other than that, have a great day. Talk to you soon.